What's up, YouTube? So let's see, it's currently about 10.30 a.m., which means it's been about three years. Sorry about that. So now let's make this impractical ducted fan. It literally has ounces of thrust and only takes a half horsepower motor to do so. As most of this project was 3D printed, I started off in Fusion 360. I find starting on the computer helps me work out my measurements and design, even for the wooden parts. It was a lot of 3D printing. I probably went through a spool and a half of filament. I used PTG because it's a little more heat resistant and flexible than PLA, which seems desirable since I have spinning blades and a motor that may get warm. Once all the parts were printed, it was a lot of sanding to smooth the blades. I did a couple of tests and I decided to use Gorilla Glue. It seemed like a really strong glue with PTG. I would clamp and glue a few blades on at a time, so it took a couple of days to glue up the fan. The Gorilla Glue likes to foam and work its way out of the gaps. So I cleaned it up with the razor blade, chisel, and sandpaper. Of course, once I had it all together, I had to throw it on the motor just to see how it felt. Next, I made the wooden rings that would eventually serve as the frame for the duct. I put a thin kerf blade on my saw and resawed some cheap Douglas fir. I ran it through the planer and made a huge mess. So a few years ago, I got this old plotter off Craigslist. It's really slow, but it's awesome for printing out big templates. The cat is like, Are you building stuff out here? <laughs> the design has eight segments to form the wooden rings. I set up a stop on my miter saw so I could have consistency. I laid the segments directly on the template. The first ring I glued in place piece by piece. I used a pin nailer to help hold the wood in place. Some of the pins went through to the workbench, but since they have no head on them, they are easily pulled out afterwards. I have some homemade lead weights that helped hold everything down, but as you can see, I had some gaps in the lamination. So on the second ring lamination, I glued the segments into three rings first, and then laminated everything together. I put in some more pin nails and stacked on a lot of weight this time to really help it clamp down. The second ring came out better. I made a 3D printed jig for cutting out circles with my router. I just screwed it down directly to my workbench and then took my time cutting the rings out with the router. Once I had the inner ring pretty close, I took some measurements off my drawings and marked where my final pass needed to be. Of course, this also made a huge mess. I didn't cut all the way through to the table. I used a router bit with a follower bearing to clean up the last sixteenth of an inch or so, but somehow I lost this footage. I used this thin 2.7 millimeter plywood you can get from Home Depot and ripped it into strips of 13 and a half inches wide. And then I started wetting it down.
Trying to shape the wood proved to be a bit of a challenge. I tried a bunch of different things. I spent a lot of time on it for results that were less than elegant. I had way too much spring back because of not using heat. The wood also wanted to fold at weak points, so I tried wrapping it on itself for support. None of this worked well. Ultimately, I had to make a form to wrap the wood around. I used some scrap plywood to build a form that had three segments. The form was slightly larger than the final size because I was worried if I tried to wrap it too tight, I would break the plywood. I made the form small enough, however, so that it could still fit in the oven. Wrapping the wood on the form was a bit awkward. I stapled it at the beginning and used straps to hold everything tight. I then set the oven to 330 degrees. I wasn't exactly sure what a good temperature would be. I experimented a bit here and found if it gets really hot, you'll have almost no spring back, but you may burn the wood. I also tried putting the wood into the oven without a form, just wrapped around itself, but that was a failure. In the end, I got decent results using the form with 300 degrees for about 30 minutes. Once I had the plywood formed, I fit it in the rings and marked where it needed to be cut. The fit in the rings was pretty close. There was a little bit of a gap. To check the fit, I clamped everything in place before gluing. And of course, I had to see how the fan would fit in. I glued and clamped the front ring first. I took the other piece of plywood and trimmed it down so that it could be laminated to the inner plywood while leaving a lip for the rear ring to seat in. I wore rubber gloves to quickly wet the whole piece of plywood with glue. I made sure to cover the seam on the inside to help flatten it out and make the curve consistent, if that makes sense. The rear ring sits a little proud of the plywood. That way it forms a lip for the tail cone to sit in. I'm using straps again for clamps. In retrospect, from the start, I should have just used hose clamps. The straps were kind of awkward, so I eventually did go and get hose clamps. I laid out a template for my tail cone. At this point, I was becoming more proficient at forming the wood. I set my circular saw to a very shallow depth of cut. That way it would follow a curve easily. This time I used hose clamps and then put it in the oven. It worked so much better. Filled the gap with some wood filler. And now it's time to take apart the half horsepower grinder motor. It's always fun taking the 3D printed parts and matching them up with real world parts to see how accurate or inaccurate your measurements were. The wires would be run through one of the ducted fan vanes. I took a lot of time in designing the plastic parts. I wanted them so that they could all seat together. I marked the inside of the duct to find where to drill the holes for the veins. Put a drill bit in the hole that's on the front of the vein because it's offset, not on center line. So pressing it into the wood left a mark for me to drill.
threaded rods thread into the plastic parts, run through the veins, and are bolted from the outside. To mark the hole for the wires to run through, I set the vein on the outside, and this helped me locate where the hole needed to be drilled. Once I had the wires fished through, I got rid of the little plugs on the motor and soldered the capacitor and the main wires to the outside. At first I had trouble fitting the motor in. Because of the way I designed the plastic parts, two of the veins were actually slightly longer than the other two and I had just put them in the wrong place. Once they were placed correct, everything went together just fine. I put nuts and washers on all the threaded rods and then tightened the rods into the plastic with vice grips. Putting the fan on for the first time and seeing it clear the duct is very satisfying. I held the back shaft of the motor with pliers and threaded the fan to the shaft. The plastic motor tail cone just clips on. Once the tail cone was done in the oven, I set it up and trimmed it. I glued a piece of wood to the seam because it had spring back. Once finished, it held its cone shape well. The cone fit pretty well and it stays in place by friction fit. So here's the final setup. It hangs hinged from the ceiling and it's balanced so that it sits level. And that's pretty much it. So why did I build this fan? I actually built it to do some tests, you know, calculate thrusts, power consumptions, calculate speeds, and figure out the math behind it. But we'll save that for the next video. See you in three years, YouTube. Just kidding. We'll do it in, let's say a week, or maybe a month, eventually. All right, let's have a heart to heart. It's gonna be a month. I feel like I just lied to YouTube.